Rising gas prices have become a problem for SCV members. COVID guidelines will soon be lifted. Starbucks has been able to stay on top with quick adaptations. Roller skating has had a huge comeback during the pandemic. And a local artist is giving community members a unique reason to venture into nature. I'm Lauren Hanna, and this is your Canyons News Micro. With news from across the Santa Clarita Valley, this is Canyons News. for tuning in to Canyons News. With gas prices rising all throughout the country, Santa Clarita residents are experiencing firsthand what it's like to pay more at the pump. Caden West has all the details. Gas prices are rising, not only around the country, but also in Santa Clarita. From December of last year to today, the average price of gas in California has gone up a dollar to almost $4.20 per gallon. With gas prices continuing to rise, Santa Clarita residents have voiced their concern with the trend. I don't like it. Before, it used to cost me 25 to fill up my car. Now it costs $40 to fill up my car. The rise in gas prices around the country has mainly been linked to the coronavirus pandemic ending and the Colonial Pipeline shutting down along the East Coast. The pipeline is responsible for delivering gas to states ranging from Texas to Pennsylvania. Despite the shutdown and gas shortage on the East Coast, Santa Clarita residents don't think it has affected California prices. I felt like California, gas prices are always increasing, and then the East Coast is known for being cheaper than here, just because already taxes are high in this state, especially in those. So I didn't think the pipeline break would affect this state. Meanwhile, companies like Lamborghini are investing over a billion dollars into electric vehicles in order to follow the market trends. With gas-powered cars becoming more expensive and electric vehicles becoming more popular, Santa Clarita residents expect gas prices to continue to increase. Uh, I mean, more electric cars are continuing to release, so most likely gas prices are going to continue to increase. Uh, it's just a demand, market demand and supply. For Canyons News, I'm Caden West. California is only a few weeks away from returning to life pre-pandemic, and COVID-19 guidelines will soon come to an end. Here's Shana Moultrie with the story. California is right on track to fully reopen on June 15th. With case rates at an all-time low and the amount of vaccinations steadily increasing, everyone is ready to return to normal life. However, there has been a bit of confusion as the CDC announced that fully vaccinated people no longer have to wear masks in public, but LA County officials decided to take extra precautions. The state of California announced that California would hold off on implementing these updated mask recommendations until June the 15th. After June 15th, those who are fully vaccinated will be allowed in most indoor settings without a mask, as California will remove all COVID guidelines, including physical distancing and capacity limits, allowing all businesses to fully open. Although there is still a little uncertainty if businesses will require their staff and customers to provide proof of vaccination. Organizers of indoor events of more than 5,000 people will be required to verify that attendees are either vaccinated or have recently tested negative. California will recommend, but not require the same, for outdoor events of more than 10,000 people. There has also been some concerns about implementing a state vaccine passport system which will provide regular access to records of immunization status. However, the state will not be moving forward with the system at this time. Either way, California is finally making a comeback, and pretty soon we'll all be back to business as usual. I'm Shana Moultrie for Canyons News. Before the pandemic, you can say Starbucks was one of the busiest food locations in Santa Clarita. It still is now, but that is thanks to Starbucks partners being able to adapt to the new rules and restrictions needed to be followed due to COVID-19. Andrea Aguilar has more details. COVID-19 has impacted the whole world in a huge manner, from amusement parks to businesses and even big food chains like Starbucks. Stephen Aguilar works at the Starbucks Cafe located in Newhall and worked throughout the whole quarantine. So I started actually working back in late November, before the pandemic, so I knew how things were a little more different. I mean, we closed at a 11 instead of 10 before, we had a clean slate every Sundays, and then March 
mid March of 2020, a lot of our a lot of our coworkers decided to quarantine themselves. Even if they didn't have COVID, they wanted to they wanted to stay safe. Things were closed. The only thing that was open was the drive-through. Having to adapt to the new regular was a struggle for many, but it was something that needed to be done. This kind of ambience of it that just felt empty and a little a little hollow because the whole point of Starbucks is to make connections with people and to start talking. As things continue to change for everyone, Starbucks had to find new ways for their partners to be able to connect with their customers. Mobile orders have now doubled and conversations were now separated by a protective clear glass. Cleaning more often than usual was a must. Where we have timers for to wash our hands, change sanitizer, we have timers for everything now. The state of California is moving forward quickly, allowing places like Starbucks to loosen up the restrictions. We have a few seats that are open. We can only have like two or three people inside sitting down. But things are starting to look back to normal. We, we are allowing a few people to not wear their masks, but it's very few and they have to have their... Uh, the certificate for the vaccination. There is finally light peeking through the end of the tunnel for many businesses like Starbucks. For Kenya's News, I'm Andrea Aguilar. With the continued rise in popularity of roller skating across the country, Santa Cruz community members are letting the good times roll. What began as a local mom looking to start a skating group has now turned into a roller skating community that has taken the Santa Clarita Valley by storm. So I put a posting on Facebook community page for Santa Clarita and said, are there any other moms out there wanting to relearn to skate? And it just exploded. Within just a few hours, Dawn Walker was faced with hundreds of responses. And so she created a group on Facebook called Skating Mamas of SCV. Since creating the group in February, there are more than 1,500 members and more joined by the day. And more members in the group means more chances to skate. Anyone can post a skate day. So people, just anybody in the group can post a, a meetup and, and people just meet up. So there's stuff going on probably every other day, every day. While it started as a group for returning skaters to ease their way onto the pavement again, it has now become a hotspot for new skaters to learn the basics. For many community members, like Jacqueline Wask, it was the perfect place to start a new hobby. I've been only skating for maybe two months now. I saw this group and was really in interested in joining, so I bought some skates online and started skating. It's good exercise and it's a lot of fun to skate around in music and learn new things on the Whether it is beginners looking to start a new hobby or returners looking to meet new people, the Skating Mamas of SCV is for everyone. It's not just for mamas. It started out for mamas, but we have old, young, all genders, you know, we, anybody can come. It's just everyone getting together and rolling. <laughs> Community members were given an opportunity to express themselves and make a lasting impression that will live on in the city forever. Here's Samantha Bailey with more. This artist is inviting locals to come out and explore nature while helping create individual tiles for her new project. On Saturday, Katie Krantz spent the morning at Ellesmere Canyon to fulfill her big plan. And I'm leading a community art project um, in Santa Clarita um, for the new Canyon Country Community Center. We're doing a really large tile wall. Guests are encouraged to grab a piece of clay and then go on a hike to find an interesting object to make their tile unique. It'll reflect like essentially their experience of being outdoors, like sort of what they, what they encountered. Creativity is key. The only rule is that Krantz asked there to be no initials or other identifiers written in the wet clay so as not to distract from the final mosaic. Yeah, come on over. So it can be anything that they find. It can be leaves, tree stump, um, wildflowers, some rocks. Um, and then they take their clay out of the bag and press it into that texture. You want one of those pokey leaves too? Yeah. Okay. Once complete, the pieces are brought back to Krantz to then be laid out to dry before taking them to her studio where she will fire and glaze them one by one. We just thought this would be a cool thing to be part of city history in a sense to participate in this art project. Krantz is about a third of the way to meeting her goal of collecting the 3,000 tiles needed to complete the 5 by 50 foot wall. The next event will be on June 5th at Towsley Canyon 
and the final will be on June 12th at Discovery Park in Canyon Country. Both are from 7 to 10 a.m., and no sign-up is needed to participate or attend. With Canyons News, I'm Samantha Bailey. For all things news and SCV, make sure to follow us on social media. For Canyons News, I'm Lauren Hanna. Thanks for watching.